Hey, Becca. Hi. What are you up to? Nothing, just trying to register for class next semester, and I don't know what to take. Oh, wow. Are you considering taking Religion 316, Genesis and Gender? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it counts for um, 7BI, 7SI, um, Religious Studies, and Women's Studies minor. So I think I might take it. I actually took that class last semester. It was pretty awesome. Really? I'm kind of nervous because it seems like a Bible study or something. No, not at all. It's quite the opposite. It allows students to look at biblical texts in a very analytical manner. See, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim interpretations of Genesis have shaped and defined gender roles and societal hierarchies throughout history. This course examines religious interpretations of Genesis texts through a variety of methodologies to understand gender roles, power, authority, sexuality, narrative, and cultural representations of the women. Wow, so what kind of things do you learn in this class? I mean, I went to Sunday school and I was confirmed, as you know. A great example of the course material would be our study of Adam and Eve. I already know that story. God created Adam and then Eve from his rib, and then Eve ruined everything by tempting Adam with the forbidden fruit. Well, that's what the Bible tells us, but is only the traditional interpretation of the text. This course allows us to explore different interpretations, which allow us to look at Genesis through lenses other than what we are taught to believe in synagogue, church, or even mosque. I don't know if I believe you, Dave. Well, if you don't believe me, you can take a look at what my friend Marilyn has to say. Marilyn, what did Genesis and Gender allow you to learn about the story of Adam and Eve? Have you gained any new perspectives through dissecting the text and analyzing the story from a more feminist perspective? Before I took this class, I didn't know that there were two creation narratives in Genesis. But after taking this class, I realized that there are actually two creation stories, because a lot of people think there's only one story. And the second story is the story where we see Eve. And in a lot of, in my Sunday school classes, as a child, I always learned that Eve was kind of this evil woman who leads Adam astray. However, interpreting the text through a feminist perspective led me to see Eve as someone who brought knowledge to the world and as someone who was an independent woman and who interpreted scripture for herself and acted on her own to get that apple, or no, that fruit. <laughs> Wow, Marilyn, I never thought of it that way before. Thank you. You are so welcome. Well, now you've grabbed my interest. What other types of stories does the class cover? Well, a major portion of the course is dedicated to the story of Dina, the daughter of Jacob. I know that story too. It's simple. Dina's actually just a footnote. I mean, she gets raped and then ends up marrying the man who committed the crime because, J because Jacob makes a deal with his father, who is the king of a foreign village. I don't see how we could study the women in this story if they are so minor. That's why we not only spend time analyzing the text itself, but also read The Red Tent, a book by Anita Diamant, which provides a different possible perspective on what may have happened in the story of Dina. Hmm. I'm intrigued, but it would be helpful to talk to at least one more person who's taken the class. It's funny that you say that. My other friend Mary, not Marilyn, Mary, is actually about to come over to talk with us about the course. I just texted her. Hey, Mary, did analyzing the story of Dina in class and through the use of the Red Tent allow you a different perspective on Genesis 34 than you had previous to taking this course? Yes, it definitely did, because in Genesis 34, Dina is basically just a footnote, and we don't get to hear her voice or her side of the story. And so in the Red Tent, we not only get to hear Dina's side of the story, but also her four mothers. And so... It's really, it was really interesting and eye-opening to see the biblical stories from a female perspective instead of from a male perspective. So in the Red Tent, we get to see that maybe it was possible Dina wasn't raped and she just fell in love with the wrong person because in the Red Tent, her brothers are angry that it's a foreigner that she tries to marry and they're not angry because of him supposedly raping her and they use that as a pretext to kill him. And so the Red Tent, gives you a perspective on the male characters in the Bible that is not necessarily favorable, but it also shows that there was some racial tension between different ethnic groups at the time. Oh my, 
It's crazy to think that the Bible spends so much time concentrating on men within the text and barely spends any time allowing the reader to understand the lives of women. I mean, I'm starting to get what this course can offer, but it can't just cover two stories of Genesis. What other stories does it cover? From the creators of archaeology in ancient Israel and Harry Potter and religion, Bidmead Productions brings the most exciting religion course offered at Chapman this academic year. An intense exploration of some of the most interesting stories from the ancient text of Genesis, but from a totally different perspective. The Bible portrays two sisters who have built a rivalry out of jealousy due to the fact that they both married the same man, Jacob. The Bible portrays Abraham as the protagonist of the text, for he must deal with his barren wife and save her from the Egyptians, despite her inability to provide him with children. This is a ridiculous claim. Sarah did everything for Abraham and was not acknowledged for any of her actions. She lied for him and said she was his sister to assure his safety on multiple occasions. On top of that, it is very possible that she was not barren and Abraham, in fact, was the one with the fertility issues. The idea of temptation taken from the story of Adam and Eve and used in the media looks like these advertisers never took Genesis in gender. Wow, it looks like everything I've learned about the book of Genesis has only been presented to me through a traditional biblical standpoint. I'm going to sign up so I can learn how to utilize various analytical skills which may allow me to see alternative perspectives in regards to stories and characters from Genesis. Thank you.